In addition, if we look at another type of cardiovascular disease or scenario, um, this is going to be a little bit different in which what we have here is the, a damage, a little bit separate and different, it's a damage to the arterial lining. Again, anytime we're talking about cardiovascular disease, it's all about looking at how are we disrupting this smooth blood flow? Here we disrupted it because of the fatty deposit accumulation really causing a lack of smooth blood flow. We're causing a roughening of the arteries. But here, let's look at what happens. If you have a damage to the arterial lining, this directly results in something, a process known as inflammation. Inflammation, generally speaking, is the way that the body reacts to injury. Whenever injury occurs, inflammation almost always ensues right after. This is the body's reaction to an injury. And in order for this to occur, the damage to the arterial lining is going to directly result in leukocytes, which are white blood cells. So we have leukocytes, WBCs for short. White blood cells are going to be attracted to in an inflamed area. That's just their job. Their job is to go to some place that may be harmed or in danger. And that's what leukocytes do. As our white blood cells, they're attracted to this inflamed area. The inflamed area right now is the arterial lining. Okay, we remember, we want to keep this very, very smooth. What leukocytes do is once they are at this damaged arterial lining, um, they're very good at uh, eating things. They're very good at taking up things and removing them. They take up lipids like cholesterol that may just be stuck there. But oftentimes what happens is if you have a, group, a large amount of arterial lining inflammation, that means you have a large amount of white blood cell accumulation at this area. And when you have that combined with a high LDL to HDL ratio, you're putting yourself at a very, very bad disadvantage because what occurs oftentimes is the following. You may begin to produce what is known as a plaque within the arterial lining. And this plaque structure begins to grow. This is going to occur when you have lots of white blood cells coming to an area, you have lots of cholesterol at that area, you're basically having this buildup of lots of bad stuff coming to one area and causing a disruption in the arterial lining. A plaque is going to grow. And as a plaque grows, what it actually becomes is essentially a fatty deposit. It itself becomes a fatty deposit and we know this is not good this is insoluble this may also eventually turn into something worse than this so let's take a look it's a fatty deposit I'll specifically tell you it will be with fibrous tissue notice fibrous tissue means it's not going to be soluble it's insoluble and it's sticky as well and therefore we'll just generally state that this is a structure that's not very flexible does that sound like it's a good structure to have within the arterial lining, which is supposed to be smooth, minimal resistance, smooth lining? No. This is the opposite of what you would want within an arterial lining, a non-flexible, insoluble, fibrous tissue fatty deposit, otherwise known as a large plaque. That's not good. And therefore, what we notice is the following. As this plaque grows, it will continue to grow. It will continue to accumulate if you have some sort of... Uh, disruption to this arterial lining, constant inflammation, as it grows, the arterial walls themselves, the arterial walls will thicken and they will also stiffen. So does this sound good or bad in terms of what you want within an arterial wall, within some sort of blood vessel? Thickening and stiffening? No, absolutely not. This is essentially going to cause a what is known as an art, artery obstruction. Is that good or bad? That's absolutely not what we want. And an artery obstruction is otherwise just going to be known as something we have briefly covered in the previous video and flowchart, which is known as a thrombus. A thrombus is a blockage and a blockage that is not supposed to be there. A blockage means blood flow is not smoothly happening. It means that blood flow might be going backwards, and this thrombus can cause a lot of bad things. When you have widespread thrombi, thrombi is the plural, formation, you can result in very bad cardiovascular outcomes because this blockage is going against everything that you know about circulatory system. Everything that's resulting or trying to 
create a system that's creating smooth blood flow and smooth unidirectional blood flow, a thrombus as a result of all of this sort of culminating simultaneously is going to cause a lot of bad things. Two major bad things that are caused by a thrombus are very common. Those are a heart attack and a stroke. So let's take a look at what happens in both of those situations. Let's say you have a heart attack, okay? I'm not saying that you should have a heart attack. I'm saying let's say there is a heart attack. Poor choice of words there. Okay, if we have, if there's a heart attack in an individual, a heart attack is otherwise known as a myocardial, this is referring to the muscle of the heart, infarction. This is going to be a bad, bad event, as you probably already know, a myocardial infarction. That's the technical term for a heart attack. How does this occur? Well, it occurs because of a thrombus. Specifically, what's going to happen in a heart attack situation, you're going to have a blockage due to a thrombus, specifically of an artery. And I would say that these arteries in the heart, arteries of the heart are known as coronary arteries. So let's write this down as coronary arteries. So arteries bring blood away from the heart. So you might be confused here. Well, I thought we're at the heart. Well, the heart itself needs to bring blood to itself, actually. What it needs to do is it needs to bring blood to the lungs. The lungs are going to oxygenate it and bring that blood right back to the heart. Oxygenated blood is necessary for the heart to do its job because it's doing a lot of cell work, lots of cellular process, lots of pumping. So it's going to utilize coronary arteries that are all over it. These are the things that you usually see. If you ever look at a picture of a heart, the, the arteries, the blood vessels on the outside of the heart, those are coronary arteries bringing blood, bringing oxygen to the heart for its function. You're going to have a blockage here of these arteries, specifically by, let's say, either plaque or thrombi. So that's uh, the plural of thrombus. Those two things are bad, as we saw here. Those are not good for maintaining a good circulation. So if you have this black, this plaque or thrombi um, causing this blockage, this directly will then result in the fact that the arteries, and sort of, I was sort of alluding to this already, but the arteries that are supposed to be delivering O2, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the heart to do its job, um, arteries to deliver O2 rich blood to heart, right so that's basically what's going to be happening so these arteries that's what I want to mention here is that they're delivering O2 rich blood to heart um, they're going to be blocked because of this and this blockage directly is going to cause so when you have a blockage here it leads to the damage of cardiac muscle that's the idea of myocardial leads to damage of cardiac that's heart muscle and when you have damage of cardiac muscle, that is when you have a heart attack. That is when a heart attack is occurring. When cardiac muscle is dying and not surviving because it's not getting O2 rich blood, because it's getting blocked by a plaque or a thrombi, specifically the coronary arteries that give the nutrients to the heart for it to do its job. Again, that's because of a thrombus or some sort of plaque buildup that's causing the arteries themselves to be blocked, not be smooth. That is not good whenever we're talking about a cardiovascular system and its function. Finally, the last type of cardiovascular disease we want to focus on is a stroke. A stroke is not necessarily directly a result, or it is a directly result of cardiovascular disease, but it's not occurring within, let's say, the heart or within um, the specific functions that we normally associate with circulation because a stroke is defined as the death of nervous tissue. It's the death of brain tissue specifically. So this, a, a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, is the death, it's the damage of muscle within the heart. A stroke is the death of nervous tissue in the brain, in brain, due to, much like the heart, a lack of O2. Why is there a lack of O2? You can already guess here. There's probably some sort of blockage some sort of blockage in the vessels that are going to give blood to the brain and the brain needs this at all times so we can state that a stroke may be due to an arterial thrombus blockage may be due to an arterial remember what does artery mean away from the heart arterial right now is towards the brain away from the heart towards the brain 
the brain is not getting its O2 that it needs, so it will undergo a stroke, maybe due to arterial thrombus, and this is again going to form based off of the steps that we saw previously, blockage. So that's a stroke. When the brain itself loses oxygen at a certain region, um, that's going to be usually a result of an arterial thrombus blockage. Some sort of artery that's going to the brain is not going to be giving the brain the oxygen that it needs, much like in the heart where you have these arteries, these coronary arteries that are supposed to deliver O2-rich blood, that blockage is going to lead to the cardiac muscle to dying, just like the nervous tissue dies. So. Again, the common thing with cardiovascular disease is to notice that we want smooth blood flow. We want minimal resistance, a smooth lining. When we don't have that, when we have any blockage, any sort of non-smoothness, roughness, whatever you want to call it, that's what's going to release or, or that's what's going to give us the possibility of any sort of bad outcomes in terms of cardiovascular function.